Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Today, you you know what, you love it. It's a tier list, another tier list. I know, lazy content. Shame on you, Noah, but you know me. I love lazy content. Lazy content's fun. Today, we are ranking the worlds by difficulty. Now, obviously, this is a video I've done in the past, but it's one that I figure I would do again, and I'm going to be trying to look at this from kind of an unbiased slash unobjective lens if I can. So I'm gonna be trying to to look at the worlds from the lens of like without a school bias and without say a pet bias or a monstrous bias whatever you get the point but before we get into the video I do want to say one thing if you haven't been checking out the storm playthrough streams that me and fan have been doing recently I highly recommend you check them out either watch the past VODs or actually check us out when we're doing it live I just really enjoy it we're having a lot of fun doing it we're in Zafaria now which is really really cool we're getting really far if you want to come in just just drop by and you know say hello or even just lurk and chat and you know kind of just hang out I would love to see you there but otherwise without further ado let's get into the video so first things first there are some extra things on this ranking but I'm gonna try my best to uh, do them in order I should have ordered it first in fact I'm going to do that now let me do a quick snap transition Wow, look at that. We're back. I shifted the order a bit so that they're in order. Let's get into this ranking, shall we? I'm excited. So first off, Wizard City. You know it, you love it. It's the first world in the entire game. I'm going to put this at a solid B tier difficulty. And the reason for this is I would put this at C tier, but I'm going to include Colossus Boulevard and Triton Underwater in this, which are a bit more difficult. But Wizard City isn't that hard. It's, it's really not hard at all. It is an easier world. The reason why I rank it higher in difficulty is realistically, if you're talking about when you're going to die in the game, I would say Wizard City is one of the highest death rate worlds. It has to be. It is for me anyway. I find that without the proper gear and without actual a lot of damaging spells, you're going to be dying a lot more frequently. And if you're careless, you can very easily go into a battle without regaining health and die right? And I, I find that that happens a lot more in Wizard City than any other world, because in most other worlds, you have resistances or you have health. Wizard City, you don't really have that. So there is that for it. I will say, I don't think Wizard City is as hard as it used to be. And I say that loosely. I think it is still almost the same. It's just that a lot of the quests have been reduced to be easier. Like for example, you used to have to beat like five different Fire Elves and collect four things from the Fire Elves. Triton Avenue was the same. You had to collect a lot of things. Those quests have been removed and restructured but overall the same core wizard city isn't very hard it's a beginner world it's not designed to be hard the only reason i put it in b is again colossus boulevard and triton underwater are a bit more difficult they're a bit more on the level of crocotopia speaking of crocotopia up next crocotopia is again a b tier and the reason why i put this at b tier is that i would rank crocotopia where i put colossus boulevard and triton underwater it is a bit harder than wizard city in difficulty the reason for that is is that you don't actually have a four pip aoe which is a bit painful enemies fight you two on a time which can be rough without a four pip aoe and overall you just really haven't hit a power spike yet there's been no gear or anything that you can really get besides bizarre gear again it's not overly difficult it's just at the time and this is again looking at things without a pet soloing it's going to be rough and again i think i've mentioned this before this is looking this at this from like an unbiased perspective so it's not a duo it's this is like a solo wizard without a pet first time you're playing it so obviously it's going to be different than say if you had monstrous and you had a 35 damage pet then all of these worlds are going to be like f tier difficulty they're not hard but you get my point i digress let's move on next up we have wisteria and wisteria is a solid f tier now it's really funny in the dichotomy between these two and this one this one is really easy you unlock it at level 20 the enemies have at max like 600 health i think lord bramble might have a thousand it's not difficult difficult in the slightest and there's a few reasons for that first off you're getting a level 20 which is when you start actually getting a little bit good gear you might have a four pip aoe at this point you know something along those lines but there's only like 20 something quests i think there's like 29 30 quests in this world it's not very hard it's especially not very long kimalung village now it's been a while since i've done kimalung village but i think for the level it can be pretty difficult i would actually put it at a now obviously you guys can correct me if i'm wrong feel free to choose me out in the comments. I love when you guys do that. But Kimalung Village is kind of 
one of those streets or one of those areas where at level 25, it's actually quite a bit of a challenge. There's cheats. I remember some of the bosses actually giving me quite a bit of trouble doing them as a level 20 kind of solo. I don't think it's the most outstandingly hard thing in the world, but for level 25, it's going to be rough, which is why not a lot of people recommend doing it. Realistically, for the gear it gives and for the rewards it gives, it's too difficult for a level 25 to just do, is what I would say. I don't think it's too difficult. I just think it's it's more difficult than what it's worth, is what I'm saying. Next up is Marleybone, and Marleybone gets a D tier from me. Marleybone has so many things going for it that uh, just makes it really easy, let's be honest. First off, you get your 4 pip AoE guaranteed during this world unless you are life or death, who doesn't get a 4 pip AoE unless you have spell elements. That helps this world massively. Second off, the enemies aren't very difficult, not much more difficult than, say, end of Crocotopia level. It's very short. The only real thing that differentiates it from Wisteria is the fact that there's towers, which can be a bit rough, especially Big Ben. And the enemies can get up to like the 1200 health, I think is max or so in Marleymoon. So it's a bit difficult in that regard, more than Wisteria, but not too much. Next up is Aquila, and Aquila is an easy S tier. Let's be honest, Aquila is probably one of the most difficult four level experiences in this game. And what I mean by that is at level 30, at level 70, at level 90, this is the hardest possible thing you can do. Mount Olympus isn't as hard as it used to be, but 3,500 health on Ares, 4,000 on Zeus, 3,300 on Apollo, those are like not easy numbers. Especially if you consider the fact that you're coming out of say Marleybone or potentially Mushu, where bosses still have one to 2,000 health at max. There's cheats, so if you like single target Ares, he's going to strike back with like a 500 plus damage spell. Overall, it's very difficult, not even taking into account the secret bosses like Gladiator, Sand Squid, Cronus. Don't get me started on doing Tartarus at level 90. Tartarus is not an easy dungeon. In fact, it is probably one of the harder dungeons in the game. Aquila is one that I'm firm about. It is one of the harder worlds in this entire game. Next up is Mushu. Mushu is at a nice, solid, hmm, where would I put it? Let's put it at B tier. And you know what? I'm going to move these two down. I know that that kind of changes what I It doesn't change what I said that much, but uh, I feel like it just looks better that way. Mushu is difficult for a few reasons. First off, there are big fights like the Jade Oni or the Death Oni that have 6,000 health, 3,000, 4,000 health, I think. Those fights are quite a bit more difficult than anything we've faced in the past. In fact, it's a step up from Aquila, except without cheats. It can be pretty rough if you're not expecting it. But countering that, Mushu's filled with more easy encounters for the rest of it. Regular bosses aren't too difficult. Most have about one to 2,000 health at max. Street enemies have 600 health, realistically not hard, especially with a 4 pip AoE or, you know, Tempest, something along those lines. It's not very difficult. It's just that these kind of outlier encounters like the Jade Oni make it a bit harder than, say, Wizard City, Krakatopia, or Marleybone. Next up is Barkingham Palace, and Barkingham Palace is another A tier, which I see a pattern forming with the four dungeons. Let's see if it continues. Barkingham Palace is quite a bit more difficult than Mushu. Not quite a bit, but it's, it's more difficult. The enemies, I would say, aren't super, like they don't have a ton of health, but there is some difficult cheats. Like I remember Chief Whip, I believe, has a rebirth cheat, which can be really annoying. There's like these noxious golems that also have an annoying cheat that I don't really remember, but I just remember being annoying. There's a lot of cheats, which can be rough at level 40 when you're not knowing what you're doing. On top of that, it's just the enemies aren't slouches, right? They have a decent amount of health. I think Chief Whip has 3,000 or so health, 3,500 3, maybe. And a lot of other enemies have similar. It can be a rough challenge at the time at level 40. So I would rank it solidly there. You don't have a seven pip AOE yet, so it's not the easiest thing. And that really is where a lot of difficulty comes for these earlier worlds is not having a seven pip AOE. Next up is Dragon Spire. And Dragon Spire is going to be, it's like a high B or a low A. Like I I would say Dragon Spire is like not as hard as say these, but it's definitely harder than Mushu. The reason for that is, let's be honest, Dragon Spire isn't that much different than Mushu. Really, the only difference between Dragon Spire and Mushu is that the hardest bosses of Dragon Spire are harder than the hardest bosses of Mushu, which is why it's harder. For example, Malastare has 8,000 health versus Jade Oni, which has 6,000 health. Realistically, also Dragon Spire is longer, so mentally it's more difficult. Like it's, it's more mentally taxing than Mushu, but I don't think it 
it's anything outrageous. Like the S tier worlds are definitely way above Dragon Spire, which is again why I I'm actually gonna move to high B. I think it's harder than Mushu, but it's still like not the most difficult world, especially since you're getting to the point where you have really good gear. I think it's fine there. Now Grizzleheim. Okay, I actually like this now because I, I think Dragon Spire being in B is good. Grizzleheim is hard. And the reason why I say that is, is that Grizzleheim is a world that spans 20 levels, which no other world does. A lot of them span about 10 levels. Grizzleheim is a world that you're able to enter at level 20. You're able to enter the second street at 25. Murkholm Keep, I believe, is 35. And then finally, Ravenscar is 40. So again, 20 levels. Ravenscar is insanely difficult. And that's not even counting the fact that to get into Ravenscar, you need to beat Jotun, which I think is one of the hardest boss encounters in the whole game. The fact that Jotun has, you know, 7,500 health plus two other bosses there, you can remove the bosses with a side dungeon, but it's it's really difficult. I would say Grizzleheim as a whole isn't difficult, but Ravenscar alone bumps it up to A. If I were to quickly rank the streets, like Savastrud Pass is easy. I'd put it like at a D or F. Bigger Ruffland, again, D or F. Maybe maybe actually a C or D because there is that tower and the enemies are a bit difficult. Murkholm Keep is a B or C, and then Ravenscar is like a solid A to S tier, especially at level 40. It can be really rough, not to mention the solo fight with Gurtok Barrier Demon. You get my point. Grizzleheim is quite difficult and it is a precursor for the next world which is winter tusk which is going to be our second s tier winter tusk is everything that made grizzleheim hard but harder the enemies cheat they are quite a bit more difficult like i think even just frost bones have 1900 health or they have 1100 health i don't know something in there they spam shields a lot of ice enemies spam shields there's critical now that you need to worry about winter tusk is just probably one of the hardest areas to get through the game if you are experiencing it as a first time player or as a solo player it, it, it's really rough now celestia celestia is a really hard world to rank celestia is a world that you could either enter at two points you can either enter it at level 43 or 44 without doing winter tusk or you do winter tusk first and you enter at around level 50. now the reason why this is so different is that if you enter at around level 50 which is what the world intended you technically to enter at when it was first created uh this world's quite a bit easier things like astral magic you get like actually while you're doing it you have better gear like you have the new dragon spire gear that recently came out you have more health, stuff like that. But if you enter at level 43, you have the problem where you're not getting astral magic until you probably get closer to finishing the world, which is just, you know, insane. Waterworks isn't going to hit for a lot longer. Celestia just becomes harder. Celestia, I would put, if you're entering it at level 43, the enemies are quite difficult for you. I would put it at maybe B or A tier. In fact, I'd probably put it at A tier around Grizzleheim level. But if you're entering at level 50, it's probably more a C tier. So I'm just gonna stick it firmly in the middle, put it at B tier. I think that that's fine. Again, it depends on what level. Waterworks. Now, Waterworks is a hard dungeon. This is another S tier. Over time, over the years, we've learned how to do it and we've learned how to get better at it. But that doesn't mean it's an easy dungeon. Things such as Luska, still really not easy like 20,000 health is a jump from anything you do in celestia not to mention the last boss and his two other boss minions it's it's not easy especially 20,000 health bosses not what you come to expect after celestia only having a maximum of like what 5 to 10k so waterworks is definitely hard not to mention it's it's a long dungeon it takes like an hour each mob fight the enemies have like 1500 health which is more than most mobs have at this level it is quite the difficult dungeon so I'll put it there. House of Scales. Now, House of Scales is like Waterworks, but slightly easier. I would put House of Scales at A tier, which, hey, look at that. Following in the line of dungeons. House of Scales isn't insanely hard. I would say the main issue with it is that there are some cheating bosses. Like, I know that there's one that spams Leviathan at you. Some of them have an upwards of 10,000 health. It's difficult, don't get me wrong. It's just not as difficult as Waterworks, Winter Tusk, or Aquila. Next up is Zafaria, and this is where worlds are gonna start getting easier again. Zafaria, I'm gonna put at C tier. Now the reason why things get easier, and some of you might know this, you get waterworks gear before doing Zafaria almost 100% of the time. I believe Phantom and I, we just got to Zafaria. We're level 59, so we're gonna have waterworks gear in one level. It's really strange. I don't think I've ever gotten to Zafaria without hitting 60 first, but lo and behold, here we are. Zafaria isn't as difficult for a few reasons. First off, you've hit 48, so you have a 7 pip AoE. That automatically makes it 
quite a bit easier. To the waterworks gear, you get up to almost 100 damage on every single wizard. Obviously, ice is going to have some problems. You only get like 30 damage from your waterworks gear. Every other school, you're going to be kind of swimming in damage. You're going to have good stats. The enemies don't really live up to it. Like, you you power spike massively, but the enemies only power spike slightly compared to Celestia is the problem. So like you shoot quite a bit ahead of them to the point where enemies in Zafaria are quite easy. So I'm going to put it at C tier. I don't think it's like easy, easy. Like it's not Marleybone easy, but it's definitely harder. Or it's definitely not nearly as hard as say Celestia. Next up is Avalon and Avalon is actually also quite a bit difficult uh, compared to some other worlds. Bosses get up to 15 to 15,000 health, I think, is the limit in Avalon now. It's quite a bit of health, but I would say Avalon, you can get Jewel of the Faint by this point. You have Waterworks gear, double faint, seven pip AoE. It's definitely, it's harder than these worlds, but I don't know if it's A tier. So I'm gonna put it like really high B. It's like harder than Dragon Spire, Mushu, Celestia, not as hard as these A tier worlds. Next up is Azteca, and Azteca is going to be an S tier. We all know it. We all hate it. It's Azteca. I mean, let's be real. There's double bosses that have 20,000 health each. Bosses have hidden secondary schools. They crit super frequently. Gear is starting to kind of fail you now. Like, Waterworks gear isn't nearly as good anymore as it was in Zafaria and Avalon. It's rough. Let's be honest. It's Azteca. No one's going to argue with Azteca being an S tier, I don't think. Next up is Chrysalis, and Chrysalis is slightly less hard than Azteca, but definitely hard. Chrysalis doesn't have nearly as many double bosses or secondary masteries, but also halfway through Chrysalis, you get Malastare gear, which is a huge step up. You also get shadow magic, which can be pretty useful. Realistically, Chrysalis could be moved like low B. I don't know. Chrysalis is hard in the beginning. There's definitely some difficult enemies, but towards the end, you're you're swimming in it. It's not as bad. So uh, I'll put it in A. Next up, we have Darkmoor, and we all know Darkmoor is one of the hardest dungeons in this game. It's an S tier. Now, this is interesting because it, you know, shies away from the other three of the four dungeons. Darkmoor is hard. It has some of the more, most difficult cheating bosses in the game. Obviously, once you know their cheese and how to counter them, they're not nearly as hard, but they're still up there. Like, if you don't know how to counter Yevgeny, you're going to have some problems. If you don't know how to counter Shane Von Shane, you're going to have some problems. If you don't have a good team in general, you're going to have some problems. On top of that, that's not to mention that Darkmoor is almost needed. So this is like difficult and and it's almost boosted by the fact that uh, it's mentally difficult. Like Darkmoor, you need to be ready to farm it for a while if you don't have crowns, right? Like you need to get ready to do multiple runs to get that set of gear. And that's not easy, especially nowadays when less people are doing it, less people are doing the full dungeon. It's gonna be harder to find a team to run with. So I'm gonna put it in S tier. Polaris. Polaris is a world that hits all of the right notes. And with difficulty, this is interesting, is Polaris resets the difficulty. I remember when this world first came out, everyone was astonished because we just got out of Chrysalis and Darkmoor and stuff where bosses had an upwards of 20,000 health. Even in Chrysalis, some bosses had up to like 26,000 health to Polaris where obviously the rat has 25,000 health. But a lot of bosses only had about six to 10,000 health. So it felt like a complete reset. And the reason why that is, is Polaris does difficulty right. Polaris has a few bosses that have interesting and complex cheats that make you think and make you kind of need to think to beat them. Whereas it's not just a bunch of damage sponges. And I think that Polaris is easier because of that, but it's also harder in some places. The rat fight was probably one of the hardest fights of my life when I first did it. And I'm sure a lot of you can remember that. The rat was not easy when it first came out. No one knew how to do it. It was rough. I think Polaris is fine there. It could go a bit higher. Again, the problem with Polaris is that it can be pretty easy, but it can be really difficult at times. So I'm going to put it in B tier. I think that's fair. Next up, we have Mirage, and Mirage is kind of like Polaris, but maybe slightly higher, especially with the spider fight. Uh, Mirage, it has some difficulties to it. There's the Shadow shadow Jockey, Shadow Walkie, I think that's his name. Just that whole ending sequence can be a bit difficult with the Shadow Bosses. I think it's higher than the other Bs, but it's not an A tier yet. Imperia, however, is an A tier. Imperia is a solid A tier, I would say. The bosses can be difficult, especially the 
the trident is again really difficult but general bosses are okay general enemies are okay it's certainly a step up from a lot of the b-tier worlds like imperia is definitely harder than mirage avalon dragon spire so on and so forth it is kind of the culmination of the rest of arc 3 it does what arc 3 does really well which is interesting cheating bosses and harder cheating bosses but not damage sponges anymore which is nice to see i think it's a it's a nice a tier with some difficult bosses i would say next up is the catacombs and let's be honest catacombs is s tier catacombs has some problems i don't think i've ever actually fully finished the catacombs i think i've gotten up to the devourer once the bosses are just really hard and annoying and have stupid cheats most of the time this is like trying to take what Imperia and Arc 3 did well, and then they just twist it and ruin it because they add kind of the damage sponginess back to the enemies while maintaining the very difficult and complex cheats, and they make the cheats even worse. So, you know, I I think this is S tier difficulty, especially fights like the Devourer, uh, they suck, let's be honest. Next up is Caramel, and Caramel isn't as difficult as these other bosses until you get to the end. This is, again, a B tier. This actually, I would would say closely mirrors Polaris in a lot of ways. There are a lot of fights, some not very difficult, some very difficult. In fact, actually, I'm going to move Caramel up one because I just remembered that the like King Gobsmack fight exists. Realistically, Caramel's one of those worlds where there's not the most difficult fights, but the difficult fights are really difficult, like King Gobsmack, like the Divine Paradox. Obviously, there are strategies to counter it, but they still exist, and to a newer player, they're going to be difficult. So, Caramel's a fine A tier, I would say. Lemuria. Now, Lemuria is one that's hard for me, because I think overall, it's more difficult than Caramel, but the highest of highs in Lemuria are as difficult as the highest of highs in Caramel. So, I think that Lemuria is a B tier, and, and I know th that's kind of probably weird to see because I know that a lot of people were like oh Lemuria enemies actually do damage and stuff now which is scary but like the hardest fight of Lemuria isn't as hard as the hardest fight of Caramel is what I would say but they're very close to each other I would say so I think that that's fine there Novus now Novus is interesting because I don't think Novus is very difficult in fact I'm gonna put it at C tier I've only done it twice so I could be wrong and I could be misremembering things but I don't think Novus is very difficult honestly realistically a lot of mob fights can be finished with a 7 pip AoE. You just blade 7 pip. A lot of boss fights aren't the most challenging. There are some challenging ones like the puzzle piece. Obviously, the final fight can be a bit not difficult, but it can be tedious. There are some difficult fights, but they're not really that difficult. I would put Novus, it's like high of C tier. I, I don't know though. See, that, that's the problem. I don't like putting it with Wizard City, Crocotopia, and Zafaria. Let's put it at the low B tier then. I think Novus isn't that hard, honestly, from what I've experienced it's all right. But that's a completed tier list. Look at that. Just to recap, our hardest worlds are Aquila, Winter Tusk, Waterworks, Azteca, Darkmoor, and Catacombs, which again, all of those make me shiver a little bit inside. So I think that that is definitely a good S tier. And then some of our lowest worlds are Wizard City, Krakatopia, Zafaria, Marleybone, and Wisteria, which I think are all fine low worlds, if I were to be honest. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if I should change any of these or anything. Let me know if you have any video ideas or things I should do in the future. But otherwise, that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Adios.